All right, happy Pi Day, everybody. So this video, we're going to be running through how to do a two-proportion z-test and a two-proportion z-confidence interval. Big idea here is we're going to be able to compare two, purport, uh, two populations off of some categorical variable. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So we're going back to proportions. So let's just remember a couple of things about proportions. Uh, you know, we, we've got the mean of the p-hats is equal to pi, right? So remember that p-hats are unbiased estimators of the population parameter pi. Standard deviation of the p-hats is the square root of pi times 1 minus pi divided by n, right? So we remember that. And then the shape, we get normality, approximately normal, if, now with one proportion, we did n times pi is bigger than 10, and n times 1 minus pi is bigger than 10, okay? So that was for our test for a confidence interval we'll use p-hats, right? So, so those are our, our ideas. Now, um, when we start to look at two proportions, we start to get a little bit more lenient. And as long as we, we kind of change this, as long as n1 p hat 1 is bigger than 5, n1 1 minus p hat 1 is bigger than 5, that says the first distribution is approximately normal. And then the second distribution, n2 p hat 2 is bigger than 5, and n2 1 minus p hat 2 is also bigger than 5, then we, then we can say that both distributions are approximately normal. So that, that's really our condition here to check this out. Okay? So here is our test, our two proportion z test. So if you want to just take a look at that, it's this beast of a formula right here. And I'm going to walk through this whole thing because you might notice some things that are a little bit weird. P out 1 minus P out 2. That's our statistic, right? Minus our parameter, pi 1 minus pi 2. And then you'll notice this little P hat combined thing down here. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. And we're adding basically the two variances together again, if you notice that idea. P hat combined is just you take your number of successes from 1 and the number of successes to 2, add them together, and divide by the total number of things. Again, I'll walk through all that here in a second. Here's our formula for a confidence interval. Okay, so we got p hat 1 minus p hat 2 plus or minus z star. Now you might notice we're back to the z distribution. Why? Because proportions follow a normal distribution. We don't need to have a t distribution here. So then we see p hat 1, 1 minus p hat 1 over n1 plus p hat 2, 1 minus p hat 2 over n2. So again, we're adding the variances and square rooting to get back to standard deviation. So again, notice there's a difference between this formula and this formula. And again, we'll explain that here in just a second. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. I'll give you guys a second to read it, but basically what we're saying is we want to we uh, have a new program to try to prevent diabetes. And there's 339 people that we start off with. And what they do is they assign them randomly to the two groups. So we have random assignment, which is going to be really important. Okay, One group received twice daily injections of a low dose of insulin. The other group received, uh, did not receive any insulin. They were in a control group. What we want to see is, is the rate of diabetes. So these are pre-diabetes patients. We want to see, did they go on to develop diabetes later on? That's really the question. So, we will notice first that we have two groups, right? Insulin group and control group. So we have two populations. We also note that we have two proportions, right? Notice, the first one, this would be p hat 1, is 17 out of 169. So what that tells us is that 0 0.1005 is what that is, so let's just go with 0 0.10. And p hat 2, this is the proportion that developed diabetes would be uh, 30 out of 170, which is 0.176. So here's the deal. Are these two the same? No, they're not. But is it likely that we would have gotten this difference by chance? That's the question. All right. So this is asking us at first to create a 95% confidence interval. So let's go ahead and run through that real fast. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with our panic. So I did the parameters already. So we have two proportions now. Pi 1 is the true portion of all high-risk patients that develop diabetes on the insulin. Pi 2 is the true portion of all high-risk patients developing diabetes in the control group. So again, two populations, and that's what's really setting us up for a two-proportion z uh, confidence rule in this part. Okay, let's check our conditions. Now, conditions are, are a little bit different. So we, number one, we have a random assignment. Okay, so we're going to start off with that. So we uh, independent and randomly assigned the treatments. All right, so there you go. Now we would not want to say random sample because it's not a random sample. Remember, this is an experiment which is going to help me to get more of a cause and effect conclusion at the end if this is a well-designed experiment, which it sounds like, right? Okay, because the random assignment creates groups that are essentially the same, so the only difference should be the treatment. Now, we need to check normality, and so what we do here is we just check is n1 p hat 1 bigger than 5, n1 1 minus p hat 1 bigger than 5, and again, this is our successes and failures, n2 p hat 2 bigger than 5, and n2 
1 minus p hat 2 bigger than 5. Okay, you can go plug these all in if you'd like to, but they are just these numbers. This is my number of successes, so obviously 17 is bigger than 5. Failures, then, if I have 17 successes and 169 people, then there's 152 failures. <clears throat> also bigger than 5. 30 is bigger than 5. And 140 is bigger than 5. Okay, so the conditions are met. Moving on. Let's name this thing. So this is our two-proportion z-interval. Okay, so nothing too different than our regular confidence intervals from before. Now let's go ahead and write this beast of a formula, just, just so we can do it once. So again, remember, it's p hat 1 minus p hat 2. Okay, that's our statistic, or our point estimate. Plus or minus z star, because it's the normal distribution. Square root, ready? So now we're going to add those two variances together. So it's p hat 1, 1 minus p hat 1, over n1, plus p hat 2, 1 minus p hat 2, all over n2. Now notice the whole thing's under square root, because really each of these are squared. Usually each of those are under square root. So notice that they're out of square root. We're adding the variances and square rooting to get back to standard deviation. All right, so plugging this in, so we see it would be um, 0 0.10 minus 0 0.176 plus or minus 95% confidence, 1.96. All right, 0 0.1, 1 minus 0 0.1 over N1, which was 169 plus 0.176, 1 minus 0.76, all over 170. And I do not feel like doing this in the, by hand, so let's go to the calculator and run this now. All right, so in the calculator, it looks like this. Calculator page, menu, stat, confidence interval, two proportions, the interval. And again, the name's there, so you can't mess that up. And we had um, 17 out of 169. We had 30 out of 170. So notice it's X1, N1, X2, N2, confidence level. And there we go. And notice this really does all the work for me, okay? So now I get a confidence zone from negative 0.15 to negative 0.003. So negative 0.15 to negative 0.003. Okay, and so this is obviously our interval. Well, I guess our interval started here. And now we got to go to our conclusion. Okay, so what are we going to say? We're 95% confident. The true difference in the proportion of patients developing diabetes on insulin minus the control lies in the interval negative point. 1, 5 to negative point zero zero three, And there we go. All right, so there's our confidence interval. Um, hopefully that should make sense. Everybody. This is going to mess up the view when I just click off of here. So there we go. I'm coming back. All right, so there's our value for our confidence interval. Everything should be the same. 95% confident means 95% of all the intervals would succeed capturing the true, true difference of the proportions. Um, all right, what I want to do is I want to add a test into this thing as well. All right, so I want to add a quick test in here. So let's just see, is there evidence that these two are different? Okay, so is there evidence that these two are different? All right, I'm not going to go through and redo my parameters because I've already done it. Okay, but I'm going to come back with my HO and HA. So again, please look up top to, to get your P for your parameters. It's the same thing from above, all right? So let's grab our hypotheses. Is there evidence that these two proportions are different? Again, I didn't write the question very well. But our hypotheses would go like this. So we always assume that they're not any different. So pi 1 equals pi 2, which then says what? Pi 1 minus pi 2 would be equal to 0. So we assume that the differences are 0. Okay, my HA would be that they're different. So pi 1 does not equal pi 2. Again, pi 1 minus pi 2 does not equal zero. Okay, ready? So let's look at our null hypothesis. Remember, we do the whole test assuming the null hypothesis is true. What does this say that we assume? We assume that the proportion of one is equal to the proportion of two, right? So then, if I assume that's the true, then what is the only reason that these two numbers are different? Sampling variability, right? Because we're assuming that they're the same. So I don't know what pi one and pi two are. I don't know what that value is. 
But my best guess for it is actually the pooled test statistic, this thing called p hat combined. So we're going to toss in p hat combined into this thing. So what p hat combined is, it says, OK, well, let's just think about it this way. How many total people did we have? 339. Out of those, how many got diabetes? 47. So my best guess for the proportion of people that would di develop diabetes is 17 plus 30 divided by 169 plus 170. So that's 47 out of 339. So that is our very best guess for what the true proportion might be. Why is that a better guess? Because our sample size is larger. We know larger sample sizes are better estimates. And again, we assumed that they were equal, and that's why we're doing this. So why didn't we do that before in this one? Because there was no assumption that the two were equal. So we had to do the individual p hats. All right, so that's our only difference. And again, I'm just going to jot down p hat 1 is 0.1, and p hat 2 is 0.176. All right, so now let's go. I don't, my, I've already assessed A up above. It's the exact same. Now you might notice in a multiple choice question or something, they might do N1 P hat combined is bigger than five. N1 1 minus P hat combined is bigger than five. Okay, N2 P hat combined is bigger than five. N2 1 minus P hat combined is bigger than five. So that's the true technical condition but we're just gonna get away with using the p hat ones, p hat twos, okay? So we've kind of shifted away, because actually what's true is if both of these are met, then these will also be, all be bigger than five. So we're totally fine here. So this is our two proportion z test. All right, so let's go ahead and write this formula down. All right, test statistics, so z equals, so it's our per statistic, so p hat one minus p hat two minus pi 1 minus pi 2. Okay, so we got that all over. Now, ready? This is where it's different from before. So it's p hat combined, 1 minus p hat combined, over n1, plus p hat combined, 1 minus p hat combined, all over n2. All right, and let's just fill this in. So it'd be 0 0.10 minus 0.176. What do I put in here for pi 1 and pi 2? Ah, we just put in our zero. Remember how that works? It's just like our two sample. Zero. Now the bottom is going to look like this. So p at uh, 0.138 times 1 minus 0.138 over n1, which is 169, plus 0.138 times 1 minus 0.138 over 170. There is a better way that you could write this if you like to. I just stick with this because it's more consistent. Okay? From here, I'm going to my calculator, and let's run this thing to get it. So again, same thing, calculator page, menu, stat, stat test, two proportions, Z test this time. One, uh, we had 17 out of 169. We had 30 out of uh, 170. Our alternative is that they are not equal. Notice it doesn't even ask us about pooled. It's just assumed that it's going to be pooled when you do this. So again, with means, we always say no to pooled. Proportions are, always have to be pooled because that's our best guess for P hat 1 and, or pi 1 and pi 2, okay? Because we assumed that they were the same. Click OK. And you'll notice right here, guys, it gives you everything. P hat 1, P hat 2, and then this is P hat combined. So honestly, as soon as, you, as soon as I see this question, I run in the calculator, I write on my page, P hat 1 equals, P hat 2 equals, P hat combined equals, and then we can just fill in everything else from there. It's really pretty simple. Um, you just got to make sure that you pay attention to it. So it's negative, point, uh, negative 2.02 and a p value 0.043. So negative 2.02 All right, negative 2.02. And so now our p-value equals 0 0.04. All right, close enough. All right, let's make a decision. So what do we know? We're going to use alpha of 0.05. So what do we notice? We know that 0 0.04 is less than 0 0.05. So what are we going to do? We're going to reject the HL. And when we reject HL, what do we say here at the end? Ah, we have statistically significant evidence to say to say the true proportion of patients developing diabetes um, on insulin is different than the true proportion in the control group. And there we go. OK, 
Okay, so now we have statistically significant evidence. Because this is a, a uh, experiment, we can get cause and effect from this. Now, who could we generalize to? It didn't tell us it was a random sample of people, so we could only generalize to people like those in this study. And so that's one thing that's important to know, um, you know, our generalizability. We, we need a random sample of people and then randomly assigned to generalize to everybody. But, um, you know, if this is patients that are on the border of type 1 and they're representative, then, then I think we could generalize that. All right, so there is our two-proportion z-confidence interval, which was here. Again, note the formula. There's no piat combined because there's no assumption that they're the same. Here's our two-proportion z-test. Now we have to get this piat combined because my HO states that, hey, these two things have to be equal. So my best guess for what pi 1 and pi 2 are, because I don't know what they are, I'm just assuming they're the same. My best guess for what that is is the pooled, test, uh, the pooled value here, and we see that. And that's actually what drives my conditions, even though I'm happy with you guys just doing N1P hat 1. So that's totally good. All right, thanks.